why is your plan to play your starting quarterback a limited number? So, go ahead, Dominique, I see your face. Well, what did you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know why anybody wanted to get Stidham work with the ones. Like, that's not something that anyone does uh, traditionally unless you're trying to have a quarterback competition. I certainly don't want to overplay this. I don't think there's a quarterback competition there. But it seemed like what he was saying in that, uh, that soundbite was they wanted to get Stidham some work with the ones. What do they need to know about Stidham? They're committed to Russell Wilson. That's what makes it awkward. I don't want to overplay it. I don't think there's going to be Jared Stidham starting week one. We'll see how Russell does. But there has to be a reason why you wanted Stidham to get work with the ones. That's odd to me. Uh, okay, so I have, in preseason, as the backup quarterback, had plenty of snaps with the starting unit. Part of it is because teams were trying to see if you put that quarterback in with the starting unit, what does he look like? Maybe there's a, a battle going for their backup job. Sean Payton did this often with Luke McCown as well in New Orleans. I think the interesting thing would be, and you know, Jeff's take on this was, did a reporter ask, was this more about getting Jared snaps with the ones or was this more about getting Russell Wilson out of the football game? I'll say this. Russell Wilson looked better in week two than he did in week one. If I were the Broncos, I'd be happy seeing that his feet were calmer. Right. He escaped and made some throws on the run. He used his athleticism. I thought he was aggressive with the football and his decision-making. So as, as like disappointed as I was last week in week one preseason performance, I was – a little bit more encouraged in week two. So I do not find this to be a big deal personally. Okay, well, I'm, that's why we have you here. I'm glad that you that you bring that. Oh, go ahead, Jeff Darlington, final quick word on that because I've got another angle to bring into it. Go, Jeff. No problem. Again, he played well in this game. If this happened with any other franchise quarterback, not a big deal. It's just something about that whole situation that feels weird. I'm not sitting here saying Russell Wilson's going to win MVP, but I think we see a much improved Russell Wilson because the likelihood of both of them going to Denver and being duds, for me, is just so unlikely. Nick? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I agree more with Dan than I do with Bart. But I think we have to appreciate that once we look back at what Russell did last year, it was a problem. And maybe we can wash it all away with Nathaniel Hackett. But you look back a couple years before that, and Russell's having trouble in Seattle. It's possible that Russell isn't the player that he once was, but we'll certainly find out. Because it's not like we can blame the people around him. It seems that they have good enough receivers and talent around them. And they have a coach who's uh, who made uh, Drew Brees, even with uh, as weak as his arm was at the end of his career, still made him a really, really good quarterback. So I think that uh, we'll see what Russell has in the tank going forward because Sean Payton, I think, is going to put him in position to be successful. If Russell Wilson truly buys into Sean Payton's coaching and all the details of it, and he will look much more like the MVP type of player than he did who he was last year. Well, look, I mean, we just – in Seattle, they traded him away for a King's ransom and got much, much better, infinitely better in a hurry. Geno Smith – had comeback player of the year kind of stuff, like almost like like a, a notch down from MVP kind of caliber Absolutely. season last year playing in that same offense. And and it was it did not seem to be a surprise, Jeff. I mean, you talk to far more people than I do, but for what I could tell, I don't think the people in Seattle were surprised. I think the people in Seattle were very ready to move on from this quarterback who was trending towards the Hall yeah. of Fame. I still, when I hear Dan and you talk about what Russell Wilson has been in his career, it's hard for me to not think back to some of the things that he has done. That said, to me, it's not just about the talent of the coach and the talent of the quarterback. It's the talent of the two, the sum combined. And can these guys get along? Will their personalities click in a way that allows them to be successful? To me, that's what I'm still waiting to find right. out. I, I totally agree with Dan. These are two of the best in the league at what they do. I am most curious at this stage of their career whether they can thrive together. Yeah, look, if there's one thing that Russell Wilson has not done, Dominique, it has been he was not the leader of those mm -hmm. teams in Seattle when they were really good. And if you listen to a lot of those guys, like I don't know Russell Wilson personally nearly well enough, but if you follow the stuff that all of those guys from the back in the really good Seattle days say, and then you look at all the stuff from last year with having his own guys in the locker room and having an office that was separate from the locker room and all that sort of thing. I mean, there were issues there, and that stuff – it can get cleaned up, but usually it doesn't. Most of the time when things trend in that direction, they don't come yeah. back again. Dominique. 
Yeah, we're putting a lot of pressure on Russell, and it feels like we are ready to say if they do not succeed together that it's going to be on Russell. But I do think as much as we give credit to Sean Payton, and he deserves it, that it's going to require him to alter his coaching style also. Like when he acquired Drew Brees, Drew Brees was kind of down and out, and it seemed like his career was over coming off of, a, off of an injury, and then he had success with Drew Brees. He hasn't been able to replicate that with other quarterbacks, not that he's had a bunch of chances, but assuming that just coming in and saying that there's a new sheriff in town is the best way that it's going to work. You have to understand whether Russell played well or not last year. He has power in that organization because he is guaranteed a whole bunch of money. Sure. So Sean Payton needs to be as invested in making this work with, with Russell as invested as we are saying that Russell needs to be in Sean Payton. Does Russell Wilson believe that Sean Payton can resurrect his career? If he truly does, and I would imagine that answer is yes, because to reports, like that was the guy that he wanted, then Russell Wilson will right. resurrect his career. If Russell Wilson doesn't buy into that and thinks he can kind of do it his way, quote unquote, then it'll get messy in Denver. I think it'll be the former. I think he'll buy in. Let me just be clear also, just to but go yeah, back. I guess the, the thing I, I, I want you to also buy into the fact that, that Sean Payton needs to lean into Russell too. Like it, it just, it feels like what this do you is mean a one-way street. Hold where on, we're hold just wait, like, but what Russell do you mean needs... by that? What do you mean what lean do you into mean? him? Well, the... I mean that the idea that he is as committed to Russell as Russell has to be to him. Like, the idea okay. that we're, we all talk about this, like, they've committed so much money to Sean Payton. I agree with that. If Russell doesn't work out, they need to move on. I think that, that, that Sean Payton needs to show Russell the respect that we're all showing Russell here and knowing that he does have high-level talent yeah. and that he has to make this work with Russell Wilson. Uh, and, and I will just finish this by saying, you mentioned that we're putting pressure on Russell Wilson. Well, pressure comes from high expectations. I will just remind everyone what Denver gave up to get Russell Wilson. I just looked it up to make sure I had it right. Two first-round picks, two second-round picks, a fifth-round pick, Drew Locke, a defensive lineman, Shelby Harris, a tight end, Noah Fant, and then they signed him to a five-year, $245 million contract extension. Yeah. So, One I of mean, the biggest trades in the history of the NFL. We're not putting pressure on Russell Wilson. He was brought in there to right. be – he was brought in there to be what the Jets have brought in Aaron Rodgers to be. And if the Aaron Rodgers thing – yes, he was, Dominique. He, how could you say no to that? Of course he no, was. No, I'm, no, I – I'm not, say, I'm not saying no to that. I'm saying that, that I'm saying something different. I'm not saying yeah. that there's not pressure on him and that we didn't put it on him. I'm saying that the way that we're talking about it now is like the only way that Russell can succeed is if, if Russell commits to Sean Payton. I'm saying the same thing should go the other way, is that we don't, we're not expecting Sean Payton to be as married to Russell Wilson as we're expecting Russell to be to Sean Payton. And that's what concerns me about this situation more than uh, Russell's skill level, honestly. Uh I get it. Go ahead, Jeff. Final thought. Go. Greeny, yeah. in, in, in Nick's defense here, Sean Payton has also been paid a king's ransom to come in here and fix Russell Wilson. Yeah, so I, I'm with Nick on this. It is just as much on Sean Payton at this point. He wasn't paid all this money to come in and find a different quarterback. He was yeah. paid all of this money to go in there and fix Russell Wilson. What are they saying about Tua right now? All through training camp, I keep hearing the confidence that he has. He, he, physically, mentally, he just has a lot of confidence. And I think one thing we saw in that game is something we've been talking about all offseason, and that is the way in which he falls. Again, I don't want to get agree. to the point where we're over-analyzing every single fall or anything like that with Tua. But in this situation, yeah. you see him quickly shift. Last year, that might have been a situation where his head whips to the ground. He spent all offseason trying to focus on this. Again, Look, he can see that defender coming. What happens when he can't see the defender? I'm just saying that Tua has done at least a very good job this offseason of making sure he's as prepared as possible physically and mentally, and at least in this preseason game, it appeared to be so. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, you can only be aware of so many things. And once you get into high-pressure situations at the end of games, you're getting blitzed, you're worried about the route combination, you're not going to be thinking about falling just right. And you can also get blindsided. So it's still very scary to me. I think it's going to be a lot more luck than it is skill if, if two is able to stay healthy this entire season. So, so, Danny, if I were to make this statement that if Tua Tungavailoa is healthy for the majority of the season – and, and standing upright when the season comes, you know, the regular season ends, we go into the playoffs. 
They're as good as anybody, and literally anybody, including Kansas City and anybody else in the AFC. Talent-wise, man for man, I think they're as good as any team in the NFL. I don't think they're there. They're not far off. I still believe even within the division, it's Buffalo and the Jets that are better if they stay healthy and play to their capability. But I think they're in that second tier of really good football teams. I'm also saying this because I know Jalen Ramsey has got his injury. Mm -hmm. If Jalen Ramsey didn't have his injury, I might feel a little bit more in agreement with you. But I don't know how long Jalen – that throw is absolutely spectacular. I don't know how long Jalen Ramsey is going to be out. He's a really big piece to this secondary and their defensive plan. So, yes, really good. I don't think that they're as good as the Kansas City, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Jets combination. Quickly, Nick, go. Yeah, I think I, I think they are as good as some of those guys if they can stay healthy. I think Ramsey takes them up even uh, to another level. But you include Vic Fangio, who's never really had a bad defense, two great pass rushers, uh, along with that offense that we saw was unstoppable when Tua was healthy. I think they are a legitimate contender with those top teams in AFC if Tua can stay healthy. I'm willing to do the mustache with Aaron. I will shave the rest of this and just go with the Rogers stash. <laughs> But my fear is that, like, two yeah. days later, he gets rid of it. Or divorce. And now I just look ridiculous. And I, I'm 100% willing to do this. But do you think he commits you do to it, the Greeny. mustache? What do you think? It's not about him, Greeny. You got to commit. You got to show him your commitment before he can show you yours. Mm. I want to no. see you commit to this mustache. Right. And then Aaron will, will show you that he appreciates it by also keeping it. No, my, my only commitment is to the mustache is his commitment to the mustache. I don't want to do it. Look, we've already drawn up what I would look like with the mustache. I look like an idiot. I look like, a, I look like I'm investigating a crime in London. I don't know what the hell I look like. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, that, but I'm willing to do I like it. it. I'm willing to do it, Darlington. I'm willing to do it, but then do it. No, but will he stay okay, with it? You know, no, you I can don't have this look. I, 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 I think said it best. <laughs> talk, talk is cheap. Darlington, go. I don't know what your reservation is here. If he shaves it, you shave it. You do whatever he does, you Greeny. That is your guy. You are basically yeah. just his, his little puppy that walks beside him for the entire season. I don't know, but I've got the whole Don't beard. be scared. What are you scared of? I, I mean, I'm afraid. Do it. Just do it. That. I got to walk around looking like an idiot, and What's I don't even, like you even say, well, Aaron Rodgers You don't look like an idiot. It. You're a handsome devil, We all devil, walk around Greeny. in life looking like idiots at some point. Who cares? Do it. I, I, I got to give this some thought. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.